Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson here today, and today we're gonna to be going ahead and looking at how to create a negative space vintage badge like this one that I have done for a client. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create this sort of vintage badge here within Illustrator. Now you may wanna get pencil and paper out because we're gonna go ahead and create a scene just like this one that we're seeing, maybe a bit simpler, but I'm gonna show you here. So at the start of my project, I went ahead and I drew out a bunch of different ones. And this was my favorite one. And I did this within Procreate on the iPad to make it easier. And basically what I've done here is I've gone ahead and fitted everything in a circle. Now I need to go ahead and use shapes to make this. And it's super easy to even convert this and invert it. So at first we're gonna go ahead and find out some of these different shapes. And you can see the process here. Now, what you wanna do is you can check out my old videos, but you wanna make sure that your golden rectangle is available. And you can see here that it fits within this one. So we're gonna use a golden rectangle for a couple of these things to make this happen properly. So this circle here fits perfectly on the outside circle there. So once you've got your first circle there, go ahead and make another one on the inside and we're gonna go ahead and make this into a guide. We're just gonna paste it in again and just bring in a new one down as well, like so, uh, that we can keep that for later. Then once you've got your guide in there, we can start being very creative. Now I talked about the golden rectangle because we're going to use circles in this to create certain parts of this. So kind of like the sun here. So I'm going to choose this circle which fits within this golden ratio to be the sun. And it's not an exact fit and that's the exact point. It's using divine proportions to create the best outcome. And don't worry about all the lines, we're going to fix them within the shape builder tool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create these mountain peaks. Now to create these, I went ahead and I went and put some guides down like this to show them where they're horizontal because we're going to reflect these. So what I'm going to do is with my pen tool this time, I'm just going to pen this in like so. And then I'm going to go ahead, highlight this, press O and reflect it by holding shift, sorry, option. And when we reflect it, it's gonna do a perfect sort of reflection for us. Then just get your direct selection tool and join them two together, these two anchor points. So this is what it should look like, just a weird sort of shape. And the reason why we reflected it is to get a perfect sort of angle or arrow pointing up. And that's what we wanna keep doing. So we're gonna go from here this time. So click off there, go from here to here. And then we're going to do the exact same thing so press O, hold option, click on here, press copy, and it will come down like so. We're gonna do the exact same thing again, and just keep repeating this, and we can always change these afterwards as well. What we're really looking for is just the angle. So you can see here, I'm gonna change this one, so it's gonna come down like so, like that. Reflect this one over, just copy that over there, move this path back in, like so. And that looks pretty decent so far. So what we can do is we can play around with the way that this is perceived or looking by basically we can move this one further up if we wanted to and this one further down. And what this will do is it get a different effect on the actual mountains and which one's poking through. So now we want to go ahead and get this line here, which is kind of like the horizon hill line. And I'm going to copy this circle here, bring it down or alt dragging it. And I'm going to make this bigger by times it by the golden ratio, which is like this. So you go times by 1.618. Okay, so that's been made bigger. And that's in divine proportion of the other circle. Now you don't have to do that. The golden ratio isn't everything, but I thought you guys may want to know that. So now we've got that. What I'm going to do is I've got the good horizon line there. It works pretty well. I'm going to start making these parts here and there's no real science to this. Just make it look decent in itself. Uh, make these little parts look different to each other, but also keep them so they look okay. Let me just carry on like this. I want to make sure that these, because this is going to be a very thick stroke. And when it's monoline stuff like this, you want to make sure it is like working pretty well. You've got to be careful because the strokes can sometimes put people off. Like, because they're so thin right now, you want to make sure they're a bit, you know, a bit thicker in the end. So you've got to keep in mind of that. Okay, now we're going to do the clouds. And the clouds are pretty easy to do as well. We just need to get a few circles. So I'm going to work out which circle's best. And it could be this one, or it could be this one, the smaller one. 
We'll use a smaller circle. And that's again in the divine proportions right there. So we're just going to go ahead and you know copy this one, duplicate it, make it look a, a bit better, like so. And we're going to highlight these and we're going to go ahead and merge them all together. And once we've got those clouds right there, like so, we can go ahead and cut them in the certain areas that we want them to be cut. And what I'm going to do is make an exception for this and make it slightly bigger so it cuts like this into there. And I know it's not the golden ratio rule, but that's what I want to do. I just want to make sure it works. I'm also going to create another cloud line here that cuts into there. And we're just going to get rid of these parts here that we don't need. So just get rid of these bits here. And this is the great thing about this tool is you can get rid of stuff like that. Awesome. So now what we want to do is go ahead and create this set of the sun line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this again bring it down. I'm going to get it so it can fit as a border to where it's going to be. So I want these to hit in a certain border. I'm going to make this bigger as well. So I'm going to make a guide here. And what these guys do is it gives us a border for these rays of light that you'll be able to see in a sec. So what I'm going to do is just make a array here that's pointing straight up. And I'm going to align it to this circle by double clicking there and aligning it horizontally to the circle like so. And we're doing 22.5 so we can get those rays of light right there. And we need to click these because these are going to turn into guides as well. Because this is the easiest way of me explaining it really, creating these sort of rays of light that are equal all the way around. So these are kind of like clock handles. And these are going to work really well. Just group them together and press them in like so. And what we're going to do is just to fit with this border, I'm going to create some paths like this that fit roughly within those lines that come from this guide here all the way to the other guide. And wherever the guide ends, that's where this ends. And this is a really good way of making the badge look pretty cool. And anything like here we don't need to do aside from like, uh, maybe here we can break the rules slightly and bring it a bit further out. I'm not all about rules, but like uh, maybe bring it a bit further out, like so. Okay, and there we go. We've got some rays of light, and we can go ahead and bring that down. And those rays of light are going to look pretty dank when we do them. I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller now because I think we've got everything apart from the trees. So I'm going to make some trees very easily here as well. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, use the pen tool to do this. And all I'm going to do is make a line like so, create kind of like a thing here. And then I'm going to reflect it to get that perfect reflection. And then I'm going to highlight those two and join them together. Guys, if you're getting a bit lost of this, this is kind of like an advanced tutorial. But I wanted to show you the process behind making something like this. Because once you see someone making something like this, I think it gets a bunch easier. So we're just going to use that as a tree. It's not the best tree, but we can use it. Now, the most important thing about this is to keep everything consistent. So the line weight sh should be consistent uh, throughout this whole process. Now, we can change the line weights and everything else to make it look more like this here, which is the final image that we're trying to hold to. Or the vintage version here has got a bit of a vintage effect to it. But you can see how thick those lines are and how negative spaced it is. So a lot of the positive space has been inverted into negative. So what we're going to do now is basically just work out whether this works or not, which I know for a fact it does. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and use the Shape Builder tool here. We're just going to highlight all this, use the Shape Builder tool to get rid of this kind of like lines here that we don't need because we do not need them, like so. I think that works pretty well there. I'm going to go ahead and move this further down and kind of do this. And what that's going to do is give us a contour. And then once we've done this, we're going to go ahead and shift an M. Go ahead and get rid of these using the Shape Builder tool by minusing it out. And this could be like, the grasslands here, which is going to give us some texture there. Very simplistic, very fun to do. I'm going to go ahead and create another tree over here as well. Just copying this down. Maybe make it a bit smaller, make this one a bit bigger. Something like that. Okay, let's have a look at it and see what it looks like. Okay, we need to sort out this sun and it's very easy to do. We're just going to highlight all this. 
We're going to get rid of the parts of the sum we don't need to see, all these paths here, just like that. And that works pretty well. I'm liking the look of this so far. I think it looks pretty decent. I think what we can also do is move these to the top here because I've got a plan for these to be like kind of coming out of the border. I don't want it to seem like it's stopping. I want it to be like a really sunny day. And once we've done that, we can go ahead to the next step of this tutorial, which is copying this. And we're going to go ahead and make a new artboard. And we can do this by pressing Shift and O, bringing this artboard down here or wherever you want. And I know I'm repeating all the processes here, but it will be good for you guys to see something like this. So go ahead and highlight everything. And we're going to change the stroke width. And I'm going to just bump this stroke width quite far up. And we're going to have round corners as well. So go into your stroke options and get some of these round corners in there for now, uh, just to see what it looks like. And we're gonna play around with the stroke. Now you don't want it to be too, too chunky, but you want it to be quite chunky. So you know when it's too chunky, when everything looks a bit funny, uh, you know when it's not too chunky, when everything looks a bit too thin. It's about a trial and error. So now we've got this, I'm going to create yet another artboard just down below it. We'll get rid of this square here. And what we're going to do is copy this by pressing command C just to make sure we don't do anything wrong. Then we're going to go up to object, path, outline, stroke. And this is going to change the strokes into actual shapes. Okay. And then we're going to press unite together. What I'm going to do is we're going to get rid of this circle here, because what I want to do with this is I want to convert the white space or the, the negative space into positive space. And the best way to do this is by quite literally uh, making it into a compound path. So highlight it, press command eight, and it's instantly a compound path. And you know that because at the top left, it's a compound path, right? And then we're gonna go right click again and press release compound path. And you can see something weird's happened. It's kind of like filled in those spaces, but you can't see anything. Well, click on the outermost object and just click it off. And you can see here that we've got our artwork right there. Now we've got a bit missing just here that I can see, we'll just, we'll just try and get this one to, uh, to minus out, there we go. And that works pretty well just there. I'm gonna highlight all this and press Command G to group it and just center it. Cause we're gonna make another circle here and we're gonna make it into a stroke so we can see what's going on. Now the decent thing with this is that we can go ahead and make some text around it using the type on the path tool. But this is really the, the main part of doing this, right? It's just creating like a nice little border around it. There's other videos on my channel where you can create a uh, type on a path so you can have the circle or the writing going around it and stuff. But basically that's all it is. It's just playing around with the shapes and filling it in. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then leave a like down below and remember to subscribe, it is completely free. A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Guys, Squarespace are awesome. I use Squarespace for my website, for client work and everything else. It's willpatterson.space and you can go and check it out. Links in the description below and you can get 10% off Squarespace if you click that link. You can have a shop on there. You can have clients email you from there. You can put your portfolio up. It's an amazing place for creatives to go ahead and upload their work and to share their sort of a story with the world. So guys, go and show them your love and appreciation. Click that link and join Squarespace.